Okay, 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 okay. We finally have to talk about it. Taxes. <laughs> We use YNAB to detail literally every single penny of our financial life, and that makes YNAB an incredible tool to have around during tax season. No matter where we are in the tax year, there are plenty of tips and tricks to use in YNAB all year round to help with taxes once the season finally comes around. Or for some of you classy business owners where it's literally always tax season all the time every day, Godspeed. To kick off with one of the simplest but most tax season easing tips ever, flag or tag tax deductible expenses all year round. Giving to charity, owning a house, having student loan interest, there's a lot of expenses you may have that are actually tax deductible and you don't wanna miss those when it comes to tax time. Here's a list of the most common tax deductible expenses. I think it's over here. Here's a list of the most common tax deductible expenses you may find you can record in case you were curious. Really hoping the list was over there and not over there. YNAB has two super simple ways to mark these tax deductible expenses. I don't know why I did this because you really do mark them. <laughs> it's not fake. First, you can flag them. Each YNAB budget has six different colored flags that you can rename for their own unique and individual purposes. Take one flag and rename it tax deductible so that whenever a tax deductible expense happens, just throw on your tax deductible flag to the transaction and easily search them all up in one fell swoop by date range and flag with our highly sophisticated search bar. What took five seconds now and a few extra minutes throughout the year just saved you literally hours, dare I say days, the week before taxes are due. Now, if you find you're often splitting your transactions up into multiple categories, you can use the alternative tagging option. Whenever you're entering a tax deductible expense into the budget, simply add a hashtag to the memo, like hashtag taxes 23. Make sure to decide on one, make it simple and easy to remember, maybe even put it on a sticky note on your computer and use it consistently all year round. Now, why would you tag over flag. Maybe preference, that's fair. But flags can only be added to the bulk of the transaction and can't be added to the split portions of a transaction. So something to keep in mind when you're deciding which you're going to use. And if you've got a top-notch side hustle or you're just a fiend for details, categorize detailed tax deductible transactions with a category group. If you'd like to see all your tax deductible categories in one consistent place in your budget, you can create a category group for just your side hustle related expenses in your personal budget. Because think about it, for those of us who are W-2 employees, all of our paycheck that flows into our bank accounts is already taxed, right? That's like easy peasy for us. But for the freelancer, the side hustler, small business owner, you are the one in charge of setting aside enough income for taxes and even more expenses qualify for tax deduction. All kinds of work related, travel, meals, equipment, contractors, payroll, subscriptions, it, it never ends. So if you're dying for more detail when it comes to tax time, you might wanna try out a category group for your tax deductible expenses instead, especially if you have a plethora of side hustle related expenses coming in and out of your personal bank account. So let's say you're a 1099 worker and you wanna use the category group method. Go ahead and make a category group in your personal budget. In this category group, you can make a separate category for each type of tax deductible expense. Fund each category as much as you want each month. And now when you spend money on the business, categorize it into these categories and you've got all your detailed business spending for the whole year right in one place when tax time comes around. Literally could not be more of a dream. Also, if you were wondering, if you use business bank accounts instead of your personal bank account for your side hustle, you can do this exact same thing with even more category groups and details and organization in a business only budget separate from your personal budget. Totally up to you, do whatever fits your style. It just kind of depends on what setup you have. Next, you can export any set of transactions by filter. Maybe you wanna export all your tax deductible transactions into one doc that you can then just hand off to your accountant. A like pie, my man. Just search them up and select all your tax deductible transactions at once. That is such a hard word to say a thousand times. From here, you can jot down the selected total found at the top of your budget, AKA the sum of all your tax deductible transactions, or click export transactions to download a CSV file. Do I know what those mean? No, absolutely. 
No idea. But if you're running a small business and wanna export each tax deductible category as its own total, like one doc for meals, one for travel, one for taxes, use the search bar and the select all box to export all transactions in a specific category or gather their selected total. You can even further define the date range to only export transactions in a certain category for just the current tax year or maybe even just the last quarter. You can get whatever data you want. Now, if you're a savvy business owner and need to keep track of individual income sources, give each income source a unique payee name. This is super handy for the side hustler because YNAB's income versus expense report over in the reports tab will automatically calculate how much income you earned from each individual source. Who are your most loyal clients? What platform are you bringing in the most revenue from? Any income pursuits from this past year that appear to no longer be worth pursuing? The answer's right here. And while I'm talking to you small business owners, categorize inflows to generate either net income data or gross income data. So let's say you're a freelancer and as a general rule, you always make sure to set aside 20% of every freelance paycheck for taxes. You just got a $2,000 paycheck from a client. So let's look at the two different ways we could record this paycheck to generate the data we want. If you want your income versus expense report to show you your gross income, AKA all the money you made before money was removed for taxes, then categorize the whole of each new paycheck, in this case, the $2,000 paycheck you just got from your client, to your ready to assign category. From here, we can then proceed to delegate your ready to assign money out to your different categories, such as sending that 20% to your taxes category. If I click over to my reports tab, we can see in the income versus expense report, my gross income of $2,000. This is because all the paycheck money flowed through the ready to assign category and any and all money that flows through the ready to assign category is considered income. On the other hand, if you want your income versus expense report to show you your net income, AKA your post-tax income, just like how a W-2 employee receives their paychecks already pre-taxed, we wanna split off 20% for taxes right away so it isn't counted toward our income. To do this, first create the main transaction. $2,000 from my so-and-so client, maybe put a little detail in the memo so you can actually remember what this paycheck was about when you're looking at it eight, nine, 10 months from now. Then I'd make it a split transaction and categorize 80% of it or 1600 to my ready to assign category and the remaining 20% or 400 to my taxes category. This is telling YNAB that only the 1600 that flowed through my ready to assign category is profit and the other $400 that we put straight into our taxes category is not. Now, when I click over to my reports tab, I can see that my income versus expense report shows my approximate net income the $1,600 income I got to keep after I removed 20% for taxes, instead of showing me my gross income, that $2,000 paycheck that I definitely won't be getting to keep all of. Does that make sense? Oh, please say it makes sense. I apologize for the amount of times I've said AKA. So those are my five pointers for today, but let me tell you, there are probably a thousand more ways YNAB can help us out during tax season. And I would love to hear about all the other ways you use YNAB to make taxes easier in the comments below. Any tips I didn't share? Tools we didn't explore? I feel like we always learn the most from each other. So please share any wisdom you have down below. So my friends, I wish you the very best this tax season and all year long. Now, if you just made it to the end of a video about taxes, you're amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's the second time. I have an apple skin in my throat. I feel renaissancean. Renaissancean. Probably not how you say that. Lots of pointing with my hands. It's like dog hair on my microphone. <laughs> Just search them up and select all your tax deductible. <laughs> Okay, what just happened? I just would like to point out, I still call my mom every time I do taxes. So, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but just big. I'm not gonna lie. All I knew about taxes for the first probably 20 years of my life, I learned from Disney's Robin Hood. <laughs> so should you be trusting me? <laughs> Right now, arms for the poor. That was fun. Now I wanna go talk about anything else with the rest of my day. <laughs>